Welcome back to Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel, and we are on our first overnight trip of the year. Beautiful winter day, minus 10 degrees, almost clear skies. Oh. But not a ton of snow, but enough for us to ski on. And by us, I of course mean myself and the dog. But we have to hurry because we are running out of daylight. It is winter after all. Most of this mire is protected, but there's a small slice that isn't. And that's why I have my GPS with me, because I can use it to check where the protected and kind of the normal areas go. And by normal areas I mean areas where every man's rights are in effect. Which means that I can camp there and I believe that little island of trees ahead is now part of the every man's rights area. So let's head over there and see if we could find a campsite. Hmm, I think I need to ditch the skis and the pulk and look for the campsite on foot and then drag the rest of the stuff in. I can of course skirt around through there if the campsite is here and get the pulk in there as well, no problem. But we'll see. I think I got it. My firewood is frozen solid, so it took a while to get it going, but sounds promising at least. I have to say I'm a bit concerned about the lack of snow because I have only a bit over two liters of water with me. And I was planning on melting some more, but with this snow situation, that's uh, 
not too likely. The shelter and camp for tonight is pretty much ready to go. I have all my skis and, and the pool and stuff like that outside squared away nicely. And inside here I have my sleep system ready to go. I've tucked it away in this one corner and using this other sleeping pad to sit on and maybe Rocco will come there as well. And then when I go to sleep, I will actually shift this whole thing on top of the foam sleeping pad so I can get uh, the benefits of double sleeping pad for the evening, especially if it's going to get colder tomorrow morning as it has been forecasted. Other than that, I have again tons of room inside of here, even with the stove. And I think now we will just start to heat up the tent a bit. It's only minus five, I think, anymore inside of here. And then let's cook some dinner on the stove. Thanks for joining in on this adventure. For dinner tonight, we will have, first of all, potatoes and onion with bacon. Good old winter classic, if I say so myself. But that's not all. That's not all. It has bacon for flavor. You know what else has bacon for flavor? Bacon sausages. This is actually the perfect time to test out this new Trangia cutting board multi-lid thing. Seems like a good addition to Trangia and one that almost should come with the kit when you buy it. Too much heat yet through this little stove because the material that I have to put in is rather small. So I have to keep feeding it all the time. That is not so much fault of the stove as it's kind of fault of my wood supply this time, but it is slowly and surely getting warmer. To go with the dinner, as always, some sports drink. So I can imagine that I'll be drinking a cold Coca-Cola with my sausages. Not bad, not bad. Cheers. Mm. You can't go wrong with bacon flavored anything. It's like artificial flavors and sweeteners. Then again, isn't that what Coke is? I think my dog is broken. Have you ever seen a dog eating a sausage like that? I haven't. Mm. The stove is quite finicky. 
I guess with this firewood. One minute it's absolutely roaring and then when I add a couple of pieces of firewood in, it seemingly dies down all the way to the embers. It takes a while before it picks up again. And because of that, the heat output isn't super reliable. So I think that I will put on the pot and make us some hot chocolate for dessert. place turns into a steam room We're never boiling some water not into a sauna no completely different thing I've gathered all my trash in this food bag keeps them sealed important also in order to keep mice and other small creatures away from your food at least in my mind when sealed up like this it should attract them a bit less outside for the last time this evening. Mm. Absolutely clear skies. You know what that means. It means it is getting old. I have now switched around these two my duffel bag and all the extra gear is still there. Now, sleeping pad and bags are on top of this pad. And the plan is to crawl inside the bag, feed the fire still with whatever little wood I have left there. Or actually before that, I will still do some more kindling and smaller stuff for tomorrow morning. I already did that actually when waiting for the water to boil but I will still do some more and the thinking is that once again tomorrow morning it's going to be a bit cold it's good to have all that stuff ready to go so I can just quickly get the stove going and some warmth into the shelter and make breakfast and, and whatnot so always a good idea to prep your firewood for the following day or for the next fire I believe it is a saying or a thing called next fire mentality. I cannot remember who said that. Maybe Dave Canterbury or then Les Stroud. But anyway, next fire mentality. It's something that I've been trying to incorporate in my own outdoor adventures. But often I just forget about it and don't really think about it too much. But whenever I do think about it, it always pays off. So next fire mentality. Prepare that stuff. Because when it counts, it's, it's super nice to have that ready. Things are finally heating up. As you can tell by the stove. So it's quite nice now to crawl inside the sleeping bag and put in these final pieces of wood and enjoy the warmth and fall to sleep. I don't know why he decided to make his nest now behind the stove but anyway yeah that's what I thought yeah so good night we'll see you guys in the morning
Ja, ja. Ja, ja. I was a bit worried that I wouldn't have enough firewood to heat up this water this morning, but actually it seems like I do have enough. It probably made a big difference because all of this stuff got the chance to dry yesterday, so it now burns a lot better. We just stepped outside and in the bulk I have one thermometer and that indeed showed minus 15, whereas this one up here showed only minus seven when we woke up. And that's definitely not due to some residual heat from yesterday's stove burning or whatnot, because this tent and that stove do not retain any heat whatsoever. So it's all just us, apparently. So quite a big difference. I don't have to tell you guys how this works. You've seen me do this a thousand times. And I do it always the same way because it simply works. But if you are perhaps new to the channel and are curious about stuff that I eat or this breakfast, I did run a big, almost one hour live stream covering the stuff that I eat, including my breakfast protein oatmeal with electrolytes. Let's leave that there. And then, of course, move into the most important part of the day, and that is coffee. And I know, I know everyone has their own style of making coffee outdoors. I think we've had this discussion already before. Oh. So, no comments on what is wrong or what is right. As long as it is coffee, it is the right way of doing it, in my opinion. Especially when outdoors. It is 8 o'clock, which means that sunrise is 1 hour and 15 minutes away. So yeah, at this time of the year, it's 9.15 when the sun rises and 15.35 when it sets. So in an hour we should get some light. Plan is to <clears throat> try to get rid of all of the firewood uh, before leaving. Mm. Yum, yum. And then maybe just a bit of some frozen honey to go with it. Uh. Cheers. Mmm. Strong. But good as it always is outdoors. <laughs> By the way, the best method of clearing that little window of the stove, which is probably my favorite feature of the stove in general, is to simply burn more wood, raise the temperature up inside of it, then the suit and stuff like that will burn straight off. You can see how the draft is pulling the flames up the chimney, so the system definitely works. I know that hot tenting is a bit of a fad, or has been at least now for two years. But I gotta tell you that yesterday when I was setting up the tent and setting up the stove, this just big smile creeped up on my face when putting it together. There's just 
something about having a stove inside of the tent. I don't know what it is. It just brings this new dimension to camping in general. And don't get me wrong, I still love tarp camping. I do it all year around, but there's something about these stoves. It gives you that little bit of, maybe it's the aspect of kind of self-reliance in a way that, the same way as backpacking in general is. You have everything you need on your back, or in my case, in the book, and then you set up your shelter, you are protected from the elements, and now you even have a little stove. So you created this little home for yourself out of the gear that you carried yourself into the woods. And it provides some warmth, it provides some really nice ambient light, at least these type of stoves that have the little window there. It definitely wasn't this feeling in the military when we set up those tents and those stoves. <laughs> definitely not comparable. And I do like that stove a lot. Easy to set up. It doesn't weigh a lot. It's, it could be a bit bigger just for the firewood management and things like that. It would be easier if it would be bigger. But then again, this is just the right size for this type of a tent for just one guy and a dog. So uh, there's a bit of trade-off there for sure. Although I'm not a fan of this tent, which I've brought up many times before, but I am a fan of this concept. So definitely whatever the next winter tent will be for me, it will still be TP shaped or pyramid shaped like this is. And it has to have that compatibility with a stove like this. It's a good, good setup. There's sunlight. And I can tell you, coming outside of that, maybe plus seven degree tent to this minus 15, it does feel considerably colder. I do like this color quite a bit, but even with these reinforcements, you can maybe tell that it is still warped. And so has this bottom as well. That's the inevitable side effect of titanium stoves. Because of course with titanium you can make these stoves out of very thin material and even though this is definitely not the thinnest titanium out there in fact that was one of the reasons why i was interested in this pomoli was this t1 mini fast fold model it's not super thin and it is reinforced but still it does warp a bit but you know considering how small it packs still and it is still very lightweight um, and functions properly, so not a big deal for me. There you go, that's it. I did have these, or I always carry these extra cordage as well. This is for the chimneys, you can tie it down in case it's windy or whatnot, but I was in a pretty sheltered location and it wasn't windy at all, so I did not do that this time. I think we are good to go. Rocco certainly is. Yep. 
Todo lo menos. I think I will start heading straight through here so I can get through this smaller growth here. And get this great guy some movement as well. I think I will cut this video short, or not short, but at least stop filming for now because I'm running out of batteries in my phone as well. Such is the nature of filming during winter time. Whew. Anyway, thanks for joining us on this trip again. If I search something that I had been looking forward to for a while now, it was great to get back to hot tenting and skiing and giving the dog some exercise as well, which he clearly needed. You'll be watching Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel. This is Rokka. And we'll see you all in the next adventure. Woohoo! Ah! <laughs>